Hi everyone, I'm Bernadette Nixon, CEO of Algolia, and it's great to be here with you today. We've seen a shift in us as humans wanting to be understood to now expecting to be understood. There's no news there really insofar as we've always wanted to be known, but the problem was that the technology could never deliver. 2022 occurred and everything changed. Why do I say that? Because there was a quantum leap in AI and natural language understanding. Just take a look at ChatGPT. <laughs> you know, we've all known somebody or us ourselves that have whiled away an evening playing with the technology. Frankly, it's the beginning of the democratization of AI. And now that we know that it can be so accessible and we know that we can be known, therefore we expect it and we demand it. So as a consequence, every organization out there now is in a race to become an AI powered company or face extinction. But coming back to now search and discovery and why is it hard to really perfect that by applying AI and accomplishing what our customers want or our users want to be known and understood. It's hard because how do you inspire discovery in a profoundly human way? How do you know your customers? How do you constantly understand their intent, even as it changes over time? How do you help them find what they're looking for, essentially? Ultimately, that's all wrapped up in how do you humanize discovery in a digital world? Well, the solution is easy to say, at least. Um, and with us, we believe we've got a really good way of helping with this transition that needs to happen, which is moving from matching to understanding. So to understand what we mean by that, let's delve in. Let's take a look at how search has been done for a long time. We call it the old way, but for many it is still the reality of how it's getting done today. We all know we type something into a search box and there are keywords that are extracted from what we've typed in and matched to keywords in an index. That's the matching that we're talking about. And then you, you rank them and you put them out there um, for us to consume as consumers. <laughs> so then the industry evolved and AI got applied and around the edges really, and that's why we call it the AI sandwich, insofar as AI got applied at the uh, point of the query to really improve and increase the, um, the matching process. And so we did that with dynamic synonym suggestions, other players out there did it with maybe an ontology or a knowledge graph. But essentially, we all applied a little bit of AI around the edges, some to the re-ranking. And the industry at large called that AI search. We at Algolia didn't. And the reason we didn't was because we thought to ourselves, how can you call that AI search when there is no AI applied at the point of retrieval? So. What's the way that the industry is moving towards to move away from just pure matching and to get to that point of understanding? Well, let's look at the retrieval part of the process now and, um, and vectors. That is how people are starting to move to this notion of understanding. Why? Because vectors are brilliant at looking at and deciphering the intent and the context behind the query even to the point of understanding things that you didn't, you know, you didn't articulate in the query that you wrote. That's what they're really, really good at. So um, as a consequence, the vector is what gets at that understanding of your query to then present the, rest, the best and the right results for you. And it works. It definitely works, but there's a problem. And the problem is that vector search is still a science project. And the reason that we say that is because you try scaling it and getting it at the speed that you want on a global basis and at a price point that's affordable. You can't do it. You only have to look at you know, Google Vertex, for example. Um, it's really expensive. And so as a consequence, you know, that's why we say it's, um, it's a science project. It's also the reason why we at Algolia did not want to uh, launch an AI search engine, a, a uh, vector search engine, until we knew that on day one, we could deliver it at global speed and scale, because as you know, we've been known for our speed since day one. So let's talk about now our way. So our way has not been just 
um, you know, our, our version of the future isn't just about keyword or about vector search. It's really about bringing these two things together as a hybrid product, whereby we bring the best of both worlds to every single search. And yes, keyword search is still going to be around for a long time yet. One small example of that, why is branded searches, for example. So if you were looking for Nike running shoes and you were looking with a, a, in a keyword search type of an environment, then of course you would get results for a Nike running shoes because Nike is a keyword. However, if you were purely using a vector search engine at that point, you would also get New Balance, Reebok, Puma, you name it, Adidas. But I don't know about you. If you're a Nike person, you're not going to be satisfied with New Balance. So there's always going to be, or at least for a very long time yet, a place for keyword search. And that's just for one example uh, of why that will be. So let's turn our attention to vector search and how we are doing it differently. So we definitely use vectors for what they are brilliant at, which is getting at that understanding, that context, uh, and intent behind the search. But we don't store them. We throw them away. And instead, we store the number that, 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 that we calculate. And we do that by putting it alongside our keywords in the Algolia index. So let's take a little bit more of a look at that and what do we mean. So we all know that uh, vectors are floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are big. They are costly to store and retrieve. And so we leverage them, again, for that understanding. But what we do is we turn them into hashes. What are hashes? Ones and zeros. That's how we've been rep representing keywords for years. And that's why we can therefore store the hashes alongside their keywords in an index in that Algolia index, which is blazing fast and has part, been part of our secret source for a long time now. And because we throw the, the, the vector away, we aren't dealing with the cost of having to store and retrieve it. So the beauty of the Algolia approach to the product that we're releasing, which I'll talk about in a moment, is that it combines the best of both worlds, both keyword and vector, and it does it in a way whereby we are the only search product on the market that is truly end-to-end -end and is able to be deployed at global speed and scale and at a price point that is approaching, not quite, but it's approaching keyword search. So that brings me to uh, our announcement in that we are launching Algolia Neural Search into the market and it brings the best of both worlds. It brings the best of vectors and the best of keywords what it does is it takes uh, the keyword technology and the Algolia index that you've known and loved for many, many years, and it also takes the hashes as a result of the vectors. We calculate the hashes and we store that, those, I should say, in the Algolia index as well. And so because of that, we are able to deliver a product that applies both keyword and vector search on every search that your users and customers do and able to do it, again, at that global um, price, speed, scale uh, that you know us for. But don't just take our word for it. I really want to key in on one customer's metric, um, which was that they were able to generate 72 times their contract value with us in incremental revenue in their first year of using this technology. Pretty phenomenal. Um, so it is, you know, there are proof points. We have others as well uh, that we can talk to you about. But that one really stuck home with me. 72 times what they paid to us in terms of incremental revenue in that first year. If you think about it, you step back for a second. Part of what you've known and loved us for um, over the last several years is that our breadth uh, and our reach. So. We believe that, per the calculations, one in six internet users leverages and uses Algolia at some, t some point um, in their internet journey. And in addition to that, that means, and that's why we're seeing over 1.5 trillion searches on our platform in a year. And so when you've got a lot of users, and you've got a lot of um, uh, searches that are happening, you have a lot of behavioral analytics, you have a lot of events, whether that's click and conversion events or other types of uh, data about what is happening in that search journey. 
And leveraging all of that means that you're able to power the best search out there. So the reason that we um, we talk about being the only end-to-end -end the only end-to-end -end AI search product on the market, and the and the, the the strength that we bring to bear because of that, it's not just because of our algorithms. It's also because of the volume of customers that we are helping on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what our product portfolio is now today. It is Algolian Neural Search, Algolian Neural Recommend, all on an end-to-end -end AI background backbone and Algolia Browse. The neural part will come uh, towards the end of the year on that part. So when we take a look at Algolia in its entirety, therefore, and we take a look at the breakthrough and the advantage that we bring to the table, you're probably fed up of hearing me talk about <laughs> global speed and scale. But the reason that we're able to make that claim is because it is backed up with figures. We have the honor of serving 17,000 customers on a global basis who generate, in conjunction with their users, those 1.5 trillion searches a year on our platform. And depending upon how you've implemented us, you might experience as low as under 10 milliseconds response time. And all of that at five nines of availability. So then we come to the breakthrough. The breakthrough is about the end-to-end -end AI search that's applying both keyword and vector search on every single query that's coming in at that scale that you expect from us. And yes, we have AI personalization and we have real-time um, AI as well as adaptive uh, learning too. And in fact, what we've found, especially for our enterprise customers, is that control is something that's really important. So that adaptive learning is really important for them. Transparency, we've been known uh, for that for a long time. And so making sure that we live true to that principle as we bring these two products together was incredibly important for us. And as we like to say, manual is a choice. So the reason that we say that is we deal with many, many companies that, for example, if you're an e-commerce company and you're merchandising, you may want to be a data merchandiser or you may want to be a visual merchandiser. Or depending upon the time of the year or the sale, you, 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 could, you could traverse that continuum. All of that is possible and you can, we can go on that journey with you as you evolve. So that's the, the Algolia advantage. It's the breakthrough. It's the speed and scale, it's the control that we give to you, ultimately, to drive that increase for your organization. Um, if you're e-commerce, it's increase in revenue. So at the end of the day, what are we all about as a company? We're all about powering discovery for you, our customers, so that you're able to deliver on your promise to your users and your customers in turn. Thank you. <laughs>